Guys, if you're a believer, you must not show favoritism. Hey, what is up my favorite people? Steve here. As we get started, I have a question for you. The question is this, how many of you like to online shop? Why don't you put in the chat if you like to shop online? You see, for me, I do not like online shopping. I absolutely hate it. It's, it's one of those things that like, it's the worst thing ever. And there's not too many things in life that I hate, but I have to admit, Online shopping would be at the top if it was up to me. I'm old school. I wanna be able to feel the clothes I'm about to buy. I wanna make sure that it's the right thing. I don't wanna get home or order this thing. It comes to my house and it's eight sizes too big or eight sizes too small. I have trust issues when it comes to it. About uh, a year ago or so, my friend, he went online to buy tools. And he went on this website called eBay. And some of you might know what eBay is, but he found this great deal. And he's like, oh my gosh, these are the tools I want. These are the tools I need. And it's for such a great price. <laughs> Takes out his card, he purchases it. About a week later, he gets home from work in the afternoon and he sees a box laying on his porch. And he's like, oh my gosh, this is the box I've been waiting for. The man went dropped it off finally. He goes and he picks up the box as he's about to bring it into his house. And he's like, hmm, it's a little, it's a little lighter than I expected the tools to be. Goes inside, he opens up the box and he realizes, these aren't the tools that I ordered. My man got a picture of the toolkit. He didn't get the toolkit, he got a picture of the one that he ordered, yet he paid for the full thing. And I believe after hearing this story, I have even more trust issues when it comes to shopping online. Makes sense. Today, we're in week three of our series, in James, where we've been looking at what Jesus' brother James talks about in his book, the book of James. And James, he is writing to Jewish believers, and they find themselves scattered all over because of the persecution that they're facing. And so physically, these guys are all separated. And James is writing to them and he's saying, hey, I know physically you're all separated. I know you're probably all feeling that separation, but just know, I'm with you. And so he writes this letter to them and he encourages them, hey, although physically we're separated spiritually, we don't have to be. And so he writes this letter encouraging them. And I envision James to be like their coach where one minute he's like, guys, you're doing it right. Yes, you're living out your faith. This is what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Where in the next moment he's like, guys, this is where you're messing up. This is where you need your help. And so, so far in James, we've, we've talked a lot about what is happening. And so just to give you a rundown of what we've talked about so far, we have talked about how James is writing to these people and he's like, hey, when trials come, when hardships come, don't be surprised because they're gonna come, but just use it as an opportunity for it to grow you and your relationship with God. So when you need help, go to God. He says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. He's talking about things that they need to understand in order to grow closer to each other and in order to grow closer to God. Because a lot of these things could hinder us from growing closer to God and growing closer to each other. And today we're gonna be talking about a topic that I'm really excited about. And I believe it is a fake item that people in our culture are getting today. What are you talking about? And what I mean is this thing looks one way on the outside. And when you open it, it is completely different. It's something that instead of bringing people together, instead of bringing people closer to one another, it actually causes separation. It causes division and it has the potential to separate families, the potential to separate loved ones and even friends. Oh my gosh. Today, we're gonna talk about favoritism. So open up your Bibles, your Bible apps, whatever you need to do to James chapter two. We're gonna be in verses one through eight. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Go. Five, four, two, one. In chapter two, verse one, he says this. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. And so James, he cuts right to the chase, right off the bat, he holds no punches, I love it. He's like, guys, if you're a believer, you must not show favoritism. 
And now he's gonna go on in the next couple verses and show us what that exactly looks like. And he says this in verse two. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there, you sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Friends, I believe these verses right here have the power and the potential to change your life and they have the power to change your relationships because ultimately what James wants you and I to understand is that favoritism affects what you see. Favoritism affects what you and I see and he shows us this by illustrating with this rich man and the poor man. And, and to put it into today's terms, he's like, hey, suppose this rich guy rolls up to wherever you're hanging out. And this guy rolls up in his Bentley. He rolls up in this super expensive car. He hops out of the car. He's got designer clothes. He's got jewelry all over. He is iced out. He's got diamonds all over his necklace. He is flashy. He's got a million dollars in his duffel bag because you never know what's going to happen. And he's like, at this time, this rich man rolls up. But at the same exact time, you have a guy walking from the other corner and he's got a shopping cart. He's got a sleeping bag that has holes in it that is dirty, that is ripped, that has seen some life. He's got a pillow that has stains on it. The only clothes he has are the ones on his back. And he's like, these two come into wherever you're hanging out. Which one are you gonna treat differently? Which one are you gonna give more attention to? Which one are you gonna pay more attention to? The rich guy or the poor guy? You see, I liken favoritism to be like this. You see, here in Southern California, we have two baseball teams. I'm not a fan of either one of these teams, so it doesn't really matter to me at all. But here in Southern California, we root for either, and I know this is majority speaking, not everybody is, we root for the Dodgers, or we root for the Angels. And so these are the two teams. And basically what James is saying is this, ultimately what happens is when we see a Dodger fan, if we are a Dodger fan, we're gonna gravitate toward this person. We're gonna wanna spend time with this person. We're gonna think they're cool because they're Dodgers fans. They think like us. We are on the same page as them. And we might look at the Angel fan and be like, what? Your team is so bad, they haven't made the playoffs in years. I'm not going near that guy. He has such a bad taste in the team, no way. And vice versa. And what James is saying is, that's favoritism. When you and I, we look at someone a certain way and then we treat them based off of what we see. And then we have all these thoughts in our minds of what is and what isn't. And so James is saying, guys, this doesn't belong in the church. This doesn't belong for us as followers of Jesus. This should not be a thing. But can we be honest and say as humans, we do this. We might not call it favoritism. Maybe some of you, you don't use the word favoritism. And I'm not gonna lie, as I was studying for this, I'm like, huh, favoritism, this is interesting. And the more I learned about it, the more I'm realizing, man, there's times in my life when I favorited people over others because we have chemistry with them, because we wanna spend time with them, they think like us. And so we just spend time with them. We might not call it necessarily favoritism. And what James wants us as followers of Jesus to understand is that we need to make sure that we never look at people through the lens of favoritism because ultimately what it does is it gives us this faulty, this blurred vision. And we start to see people based off of what they have. We start to see people based off of what they wear, what they don't have, how they dress, how they talk. And James is addressing this to the church because early on in the church, if a poor person would roll up and a rich person, he was saying that a lot of people would gravitate towards the rich person and they would wanna spend time with them because they'd be like, oh, what does this guy have to offer me? And this guy doesn't have anything to offer me. And James is saying, no, that is not how it works because friends, I'm here to tell you that God has no favorites. God's not like, huh, I like him more than her. I like her more than him. No, God has no favorites. In Romans 2, verse 11, it is so clear. It says this, for God does not show favoritism. 
It, like, it is so plain and simple. God does not show favoritism. You see, Jesus, when he was here on earth, he was known as a friend of sinners, meaning he hung out with people who others would write off. He hung out with a woman at the well when people would say, no, 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 you, you don't do that. You don't hang out with her. She's an outcast. Jesus was like, no, I'm going to hang out with her. Oh, Zacchaeus, he's a tax collector. People don't like him. Yeah, I'm going to go and invite myself over to his house today. You see, Jesus never looked at people through the lens of favoritism. Favoritism for us might look a little different, but it might not. It might be choosing to hang out with our best friend over that friend that sometimes annoys us. Where I'm picking my best friend over hanging out with them. They're the better option. Choosing to sit with that person at lunch over those other people. And you're like, I'll rather sit with them than them instead of why don't we just sit together? Or maybe it's just treating people based off of how we see them, how we view them. You see, favoritism, it affects how we see and how we treat others, which is why it doesn't belong in the church, which is why it should not belong in our lives as followers of Jesus. We need to take those blinders off of favoritism. We need to see people like Jesus does as a son, as a daughter for whom he loved and who he died. Jesus died for everybody. He didn't die for a specific group of people, but it's up to us to say, are we going to accept that invitation and invite him into our lives or not? And James goes on in verse eight, guys, I'm telling you, this is so good. In verse eight, he says this, if you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you're doing it right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. In other words, there's all these laws that as a Jewish audience, they would have known. They would have known all these laws. And the reason we have all these laws is because people wouldn't love. But if people operated out of love, we wouldn't need these laws per se. And so Jesus is saying, hey, if you show someone to be a favorite, if you treat people differently based off of how you see them and your view of them changes, he's saying, you're breaking all the rules. You are not loving your neighbor like you would yourself. You're breaking all the rules. And he's saying that is not God's best for our lives. We need to love people despite our view of them, despite what we think of them. And that is why favoritism, and that's why James talks about favoritism and it doesn't belong in the church because you and I should look at people through the lens that God views all of us as a son and as a daughter. And we should not treat people differently based off of what we can and what we can't get from them, based off of what they look like, what they, what they wear. None of that should be in our vision. None of that should be in our vocabulary. We need to see people like God does. A few years ago, my dad, he uh, he sat us down and he, he told us that uh, he was going to invite this guy into our house to live with us for a few months. And and so we're listening. And originally I was like, this is going to be sick, dude. We're going to have a roommate. We get to love on someone. This is going to be incredible. And then my dad started to share a little bit more. And he started to share how this guy is homeless and how he lives on the streets and how people walk over him every single day. And can I be honest? And I'm going to be truthful with you and say that when I heard that, originally I was like, yes, let's go. And then once I heard a little bit more, I was like, dad, you sure about that? I pulled out my phone and I'm looking, I'm like, who, who is this guy? And I wanted to know more about him. And I had all these questions based off of what I heard. I saw him a different way. And I almost gave up on an opportunity to love someone, to bless someone because of how I viewed them, because of how I thought they were going to be. It turns out this person lived with us for a year or so. And it was such an incredible moment where we got to show him the love of Jesus and we got to love on him. But had I said no, and my dad is, is the man of the house, so he ultimately had the, uh, the last decision. But, but I almost wrote someone off based off of how I viewed them, my thought of them. Friends, we cannot do that. As followers of Jesus, we need to look at everybody and say, how can I love this person? They're a follower. They aren't a follower, but they are a son and they are a daughter despite how they're living their lives. How can I love them? And so my encouragement for us is this. How this week can we see people like God does? 
It's gonna be hard. There's gonna be people who are like, oh no, I don't wanna see him like God does. But how can we be a community that is so inclusive to everybody? We don't pick favorites. We don't treat people based off of how they look or how they dress or anything like that, based off what we see. But we look at them through the lens of God and say, man, that person has influence. That person has potential. I wanna love on them. Maybe that looks like including new friends into your circle. People you never thought you would hang out with, maybe you need to include them into your circle. Maybe it's taking the time to get to know someone whether it's at junior high or another place where you walk around, you're like, you know, I'm gonna get to know that person. Maybe it's deciding today that instead of viewing people with only our eyes, we're gonna view them with the heart that God has given us and the way that God views each and every single one of us as a son and as a daughter with incredible potential. But today, my prayer is that we would stop looking at people through how we view them initially, and we would start to see them differently, not through the lens of favoritism, not treating them differently based off of whatever team they rep, whatever they wear. Let's not treat people differently based off of what we see. Let's decide today that everybody we come in contact with is a son, is a daughter of the king, and we need to treat them like that. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for this word that James gives us. Favoritism and how it affects our vision. And so God, I pray that we're able to be the most inclusive ministry, God, where we're able to love on people despite how they're living their lives. We're not looking at it as a place of where are they now? But where are they gonna be next year? So I pray, God, you get you put people in our path so we can love, that we can care for. And I pray that we would look through, look at people through a different lens today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Junior high, it is awesome. I love getting to be with you guys. Hey, starting at seven o'clock, we have Zoom groups where we have leaders specifically online only for you. And so we want you to join them. Make sure they're not alone. Are you serious? Join a group for some fun hangs, for some games. We love you guys, and we'll see you at seven in groups. Take care.